Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to a brand new episode of the 90th Minute Podcast. We are your hosts, Lucas, Waz, myself, Matt. Uh, no Liam or Greg. They're busy. They've got work, social lives. And yeah, this is kind of a Euros edition. We've been doing a lot of our Euros content on Twitch.tv slash the 90th Minute Official. So don't forget to check that out if you haven't already. And this podcast was also recorded live on Lock Room with some of you guys who came out to hang out with, out with us and chat and give your opinion. So download Locker Room. It's uh, on iOS and Android. And essentially, you have to give myself, Lucas, myself or Lucas a follow. And that's when you, when you kind of know when we're live. Or join the Discord to get notifications when we're doing whatever. So yeah, uh, enjoy the podcast. It's a little different. But once again, thank you for listening. Europe's best football is back this summer for the Euros. Avoid a marijuana Fulani bush in your midfield and clean up your midsection with Manscaped. Proud sponsors of the 90th Minute Podcast. Be a proper man this tournament and shave your balls with a brand new Lawnmower 4.0 and Ultra Smooth Package. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. With this exclusive offer for 20% off, and free worldwide shipping with code 90th. Some fun facts about the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer now available in the USA and Canada. The 7000 RPM trimmer features skin safe technology to keep your balls in check and help reduce manscaping accidents around the world. So, you know, it's easier and you won't have any issues when cleaning up your midfield, your midsection, whatever you want to call it. So, don't forget to use code 90th for 20% off at Manscaped at checkout and free worldwide shipping. They have a long, huge range of products that you can select. It's not just a lot more 4.0. You've also got the Crop Exfoliator, Crop Gel. It's time to shave. Use code 90th for 20% off at manscaped.com and free worldwide shipping. Italy versus Turkey. That feels like it's been years ago, even though it was just Friday. Um, there's been a lot of football in between that here and now, but, um, ideally the question I think most people want to know is that can Turkey pull it back? Talking about that match, like Turkey was really disappointing and a, a lot of people were mentioning them as dark horses in this tournament, myself included, I'm sure, uh, Matt and was as well, but yeah, they didn't really show up against Italy. Granted, this is a very strong it- Italian side and... I'm sure Turkey can bounce back. It's just not the greatest start to the tournament. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. I mean, I think they've got plenty of uh, days to kind of recover from that loss and kind of consider how to prepare for Wales. I mean, they they probably watched a Wales match and said, okay, this is definitely a team we can beat, get three points off of. You know, one match, one loss is not going to define your whole tournament, hopefully in this case for Turkey. I think with Turkey, it's more so... Like, I think, I think a lot of people predict them to get second in this group. And a lot, one of the reasons why people have predicted them to go far is because if they get second, they could potentially um, go further into the tournament depending on who they get uh, in the round of 16. I know in my bracket, for example, they get second, so they potentially play Denmark, I think. And then after that, they can potentially play Ukraine if Ukraine goes far. So it's, it's one of those things, depending if the smaller teams they can come up against because of how the bracket works in the Zeros. Well, so how impressed were you from the Italians, though, from the, that match, though? Um, I was pretty impressed. They looked very good overall. Um, can not really complain. I think they should have had a few more goals. But, I mean, they started off kind of interestingly with a Demerallo and goal and then Shiro Mobley. And so, you know, they just played a pretty all-around very good game. 24 shots, 8 on target. I, I, how are you not impressed? Uh, I guess moving on to Wales versus Switzerland. Um, another match in this group. Wales. Some We predicted these two fighting for third place in this group. Of course, now they're both above Turkey. But it was the 1-1 mm-hmm. result. Switzerland, I thought, were the better side for the most part. Although, uh, Wales were able to get themselves back into it with a, a goal from Moore. A very good header. Well-worked set piece. From this match, I feel like Switzerland would be really disappointed. They weren't able to score on the chances they had. They did get a goal late in the game, but it, it was offside just by a little bit. Mm-hmm. Really, it, I feel like this was a tough result for Switzerland to take because I think they were the better side. But, I mean, it's encouraging for Wales. I think Wales needs to make some changes to their team a little bit so that they can perform better against Sides that are, well, against Wales and especially Italy. I think this group is still going to finish the way we kind of predicted to finish. 
Um, I don't know why it wouldn't. I mean, unless tr Switzerland is kind of overall decent, but they had a big opportunity to, you know, maybe get second in the group if they beat Wales, but unfortunately it was a draw, and that's just, I think, the way the tournament and the group is going to continue to go. Uh, is there something you want to see from Wales, potentially, to improve upon? No. No? <laughs> you just don't want to see Wales be better? I, I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want Wales to get third, because those Welsh supporters are very confident that their side is somewhat going to replicate 2016. I don't want to see that happen for the sake of my predictions. The two sides playing against each other, uh, well, the two matches in this group for the second match day is Turkey versus Wales and Italy versus Switzerland. Turkey versus Wales is definitely going to be a tight one, uh, but Italy versus Switzerland, I feel like the Italians should be able to get a 1-0, 2-0 victory past them. Yeah, it's just, I feel like you should never underestimate the Swiss. Not They're not like a dark horse type team, but they're also a team aside that have quality players that... They could potentially get another draw, right? So, mm -hmm. but moving on, Group B, we had Belgium play against Russia and Finland versus Denmark. Of course, this had the unfortunate moment of what, where Christian Eriksen suffered a cardiac arrest and uh, needed to uh, really be resurrected, honestly. And it was a very tough moment to see and very just a very tough moment I, I don't really. care what anyone says it was complete bullshit the, the the match uh ended up going uh i think it was just a very from my point of view i found it to be a very unprofessional decision because after witnessing what those players witnessed essentially watching one of their teammates pass away on the pitch for five seconds and to then mentally reset yourself it's very tough to do okay these are professional footballers not soldiers in a sense you know these guys and, and any this is just a human human decision like no one should be playing a match of football after a situation like that you know credit to the players who were able to kind of get back into the swing of things but it just didn't feel the same yeah it wasn't it was not a regular football match no it wasn't and it, it really sucks for the for Denmark it was very tough for them to play through the match and they ended up losing the match which for Finland that's an incredible result a historic one first ever match at the European yeah. Championships and they get a victory but it's regardless of the fact that it's their first victory but it will be overshadowed because of the incident that happened um I think Denmark's coach put it perfectly it's like why can they postpone a game 48 hours for coronavirus but when a player has a cardiac arrest that's okay let's go play I understand they're kind of two different you know health issues but it's still the point still stands it's i think like, the only difference is that with covid you have that prepared in time with who's out and things like that with with the denmark with the denmark incident it it happened during a game and i guess it makes things a bit tougher but yeah it it's really unfortunate that they had to make a decision like that and either have to play the rest of the game that day or the next day but moving on to the last match of that group uh belgium versus russia and let's be real this was a cakewalk for belgium they russia were making silly mistakes especially in the first half the first goal for lukaku the defender really just misses the clearance lets the ball hit off him and through his legs lukaku was in an offside position but due to the rules uh, that doesn't come into play for that goal and it's a simple finish for him. Then later, we see Mounier score a goal after the Russian goalkeeper poorly parried it. It looked like he could have probably caught it, but uh, he parried it. Mounier was there, made it the most out of it, scoring the goal, <laughs> making it 2-0. Russia had like a chance or two, but relatively, the second half, not much really happened. Wasn't the most exciting match. But then we saw Mounier make a great run with the ball and then make a fantastic pass in behind to Lukaku to give Belgium the 3-0 victory and a great start to the Euros. Yeah, it was, I think it was a perfect start for Belgium. Uh, Lukaku obviously played very well. Uh, right now, he's probably been one of the strikers of the tournament, or, yeah, the forward of the tournament. But, yeah, he had no complaints with the way Belgium played. I really like Yuri Thielmans specifically. I just like the way he moves with the ball. And uh, I'm interested to see how Belgium will do the next couple of games. Matt, how do you see this group shaping up? With right now, Belgium and Finland are first with three points. Denmark and Russia are out. 
and with Belgium playing Denmark next and Finland playing Russia next. Well, unfortunately for Denmark, I don't see them pulling result out of out of Belgium. So it's really up to Finland here, because clearly Russia forgot their juice at home. <laughs> um, so I could I honestly see it finishing the way it's it is right now. Maybe Denmark can push a third. But it all, it, as I said, it all depends on how they play against Russia because I can't see them picking up that, if maybe a point, but I don't see them picking up three points against uh, mm-hmm. against Belgium, mm-hmm. especially with not without their best player, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, but we'll move on to Group C. Now, this uh, was, was a, I mean, one of the teams Waz isn't the biggest fan of, mostly because people keep calling them dark horses and Waz disagrees with it, but... We saw North Macedonia play against Austria. Austria got a 3-1 victory. Uh, I mean, Austria's first goal was a fantastic pass by Sabitzer to the far post to Liner. Mm-hmm. Great pass there, honestly. Uh, yeah. Honestly, Austria's team on paper is pretty decent. Like They have several players there that have had pretty good to solid seasons. and Well, you'd have David Alba there, who... I think most countries wouldn't mind having a guy that like that in their side. Uh, but we did see North Macedonia tie the game up later in the half. And uh, it was, of course, the old man Panda scoring. And I mean, that, that's just incredible. That guy, I still remember him from 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago. And I didn't know he was even still playing, <laughs> to be fair. I think he was still playing in Syria. <laughs> Good for him. Kind of ridiculous. Yeah, it is ridiculous. He's 37 years of age. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's the oldest player in this tournament, so fair play to him. But of course, Austria turned it around. Alba started getting more forward, and his quality showed as... Austria got a few more goals, one from Grigoric, which came from the Alba cross. Fantastic cross, and good finish there. And we saw Arnart- Arnautovic get the third goal, where uh, he got very angry and apparently made some uh, interesting remarks. I won't say them in here because they're a little crude. But a through on victory for Austria. Great start to the tournament for them. North Macedonia, that was probably the best chance they could get to get a result, I would say, on paper. But it's the other match I'm really more interested about. Ukraine versus ne- the Netherlands. I thought this has been this was the best match of the tournament. Yeah, it's probably easily the best match of the tournament. Some of the goals were fantastic. Unfortunately, I missed it because I was out. Uh, it was a beautiful day, so I was spending time with family. But uh, yeah, it was definitely the best match of the tournament. And uh, I-, I hope Ukraine can uh, somehow still compete and get first in the group. <laughs> I hope the Dutch take some L's. Yeah, I mean, the Ukraine kind of played into the Dutch's hands in this game for a bit. Like, the Dutch got into a 2 0 lead. Yeah. Uh, I thought. The Dutch were better, but you, I, th- I saw some good signs from Ukraine, and they ended up coming back. A great goal from Yarmolenko and a great set piece from Malinovsky to get the ball to Yaramchuk to tie it up. But unfortunately, th- this, on the third goal for Netherlands, Ukraine decided to make a couple of mistakes, and Netherlands, I think they got the deserved win. Dumfries scored on the back post. He probably should have had one in the first half, honestly, and relatively good result. Matt, uh, are you... Feeling this Netherlands side, or is it just still iffy? I mean, they got they got three points. So against probably you know, before we saw Austria, the better other team in the in the group. Are they going to make it past the round of sixteen? Probably not, but I think they should be able to make it past this group. Mm-hmm. They'll probably finish would, first, to be fair. I mean, yeah, they're, they're, that was probably their toughest test, and yeah, they got it. They got home advantage as well. We're going to see Ukraine versus North Macedonia uh, on Thursday and N- Netherlands versus Austria on Thursday as well. If Netherlands can get the victory over Austria, they should be getting first place in that group. All right, well, let's move on to the next one. We got Group D next, and Matt, is it Boys. coming home? Okay, well, we need to chill the fuck out, okay? <laughs> um, we won one game, given it was Croatia. Um, still one game. Can it come home? I feel good about it, but will it come home? Who knows? You know, we'll see. I'm not getting my hopes up because every time I get my hopes up, I end up crying in my bedroom, you know? <laughs> I can't have that. Not this time. Did you think it was a good performance from England altogether or did you see some concerns? Honestly, 
not a whole lot really too concerning. It's the first game in the tournament. We defended well. Even Tyrone Mings defended well. Taken. Not expecting that. But we won the midfield battle against Croatia, which is always a big deal. Because that's literally the hub of their entire team. We were good defensive. We didn't. The, Croatia really didn't have any chance. They didn't really push the play, but they didn't really have any chances. We could have maybe finished a little bit better. But at the end of the day, W is a W. I'm not mad at it. I've got nothing to take away from it. On to Scotland then. And if we do talk about Scotland, was uh, you, Liam's not yeah, here, but you must feel for him. <laughs> Yeah, kind of, definitely. Um, I didn't see the full extent of the match, but when I when I caught an eye of the game, uh, it seemed like Scotland had played too poor. They were able to create some chances up front. They hit a post a couple times. I thought they could have had a penalty. I just feel like they got unfortunate at times. They, could, they should have had a goal. If anything, this game could have uh, ended as you know 2-2. So, there was a few good chances. Robertson yeah. had one. Dykes had a fantastic chance, which, looking back at it, he should have scored. But what about Patrick Schick? A brace, probably the goal of the tournament, maybe one of the best goals in Euro's history, honestly. Dude, he uh, raised his transfer value twenty five million with that shot. <laughs> Bro, that that was just incredible, man. Uh, of course, our friend Liam, who is Scottish, he was pretty disappointment disappointed. <laughs> Waited so long to see his country in an international tournament, and it they was just it. Uh, disappointing. Oh, well, they fucked it. They did, but they could. You could see something good in their side. Like maybe they can get a win against Croatia. Maybe they could pull a shock result against England. But maybe that's me being optimistic. He's a little bit optimistic. It's pretty opti- If they play like that, it's it's really optimistic. <laughs> yeah. Because they'd be relying on us fucking up. So, and you can't go into a game relying on another team not to play well. So, you know. Yeah, very optimist. They, I hope, I hope for Scottish fans, you make it in third. But you know, oh, that, that was, involves that, being Croatian players, England. in my opinion. But yeah, it was bad. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot. Yeah, and then Croatia. Just to touch up on them, uh, I mean, yeah, it was a disappointing match from them against England. Mm, I expected a lot more from them, and I don't know. There just wasn't enough attacking movement in that Croatian side, and. I am a little concerned now. I put them in first place in my predictions. I definitely regret that now, yeah. but it is what it like is. England, uh, Croatia first is a kind of safe bet for first just because of uh, England's past in tournaments. You know, they're not the most consistent to get first in their group, especially in the last decade. So I think it's just safer to put Croatia because we kind of know what kind of quality they can provide, especially from the 2018 World Cup. Yes, some of their players are aging, but like with England, it's kind of, you never know what they're going to bring. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, let's not disrespect Czech Republic. We only talked about Patrick Schick, and they're in first place in this group right now on goal difference. And, I mean, they got Croatia next. Get a win there. <laughs> what a tremendous Yeah, been. the Czech Republic, you know, obviously a lot of people have them last in this group, or maybe even Scotland. So, the Czech Republic, I think, are in a good position to at least finish third in this group and qualify for the knockout stages based on third place qualifying because of that 2-0 lead. No, they haven't conceded a goal, which is a pl- uh, positive. So, just uh, they have to try and see out these next two games as best as possible, and they should be good. Now, was <laughs> we have to move on to <laughs> Poland? <laughs> nah, it's whatever. It's, it's my favorite group to talk it's, about. It sucks, but uh, you guys were shit. <laughs> so bad. Yeah. Um. It was sad. You guys have one one player, one player, and you guys couldn't give him anything. I want to say anything. Like two. Zelensky's good. Zelensky's good, but yo, you know who show it is. Yeah, no. Zelensky's um, good, but he doesn't step up enough on the national team. I doesn't feel. feel like it. No. Like it was just a disappointing performance. Very poor defensively on the goals. Poor decision making by players that should be the leaders in the team, like Krahovia getting a second yellow card. He's known for fouling a lot, and he did the same again. Got two yellows. My dad was saying. The ref should, t- I mean, the coach should have taken him off in the f- at halftime because he had a yellow. Uh, yeah, it was just relatively poor Poland. Like, if they can't get the ball to Lewandowski, then there's no. literally nothing there for them to do. <laughs> no, and they couldn't even do that. No, you I didn't have like to that. put. 
You don't even have to put him in the best positions. He's Lewandowski is a good enough player that he can create chances, but you couldn't even get him the ball. Yeah, no, it's it's depressing. And like it was kind of Poland just kind of forced to cross the ball. Like they do have some players that can beat him, man. Like Uzbek, I feel like he has the pace and dribbling ability to beat him, man. But I feel like the Slovaks defended him pretty well, to be fair. And huge credit to Slovakia. I think nearly everyone underestimated them putting them in last place in their predictions and they come out win their first game what like that might be good enough for them to get a third place spot at the very least it's just a great start for them and they do have relatively quite a few players i'm not too i don't know much about but see poland that's, poland's the same way and yeah. slovakia actually showed up that's that's what i wish the polish national team was more like i feel like we have a lot of unknown players, yet, you know, some of these countries also do. And they tend to show up and perform through the national team and actually create chances and score goals. While Poland, it's not that, I mean, yes, yeah, Skirnier is a very well-known name. Merrick Hamstrick, although Merrick Hamstrick's goal, but, you know, no one expects Skirnier to score that, that kind of goal the way he did. It's like, of course, what are we going to have Kamil Glick do the same? But still, it's just, it's disappointing. Uh, and, I like, I, I'm, I was going to say, I'm just going to... I feel like Poland, with the way over the last 10 years, I feel like we should be where Sweden is in terms of a national team, where they don't necessarily have star names like Zlatan or Lewandowski. They don't have Zlatan anymore, you know what I mean. They have a good center back in Lindelof, a good young striker in Isaac, some decent players all around. I feel like Poland should be at that level, but we're not. It's disappointing. So disappointing. And we saw in the other match, while Poland did lose, there uh, maybe there's some optimism. Oh, I mean, what am I saying? Yeah, there, you, can you guys are playing be... Spain next. Yeah. Me. Unless you can squeak out a draw, I think you're the it, fuck. It's it's more <laughs> of the case of Spain needs to play poorly, not Poland. Spain needs to have a bad game so Poland can take advantage of that. That's the key. <laughs> so the question is, will that happen? You never know. The Spanish team, a lot of people have still question marks around them. Um, you know, they weren't very clinical. Against uh, Sweden, but to be fair, Sweden was very good defensively, not, and I won't lie. I'm not sure if people have question marks in their consistency. I just think they have question marks in their overall ability because they are young, yeah? Yeah. So I don't expect Spain will play and well, much different. They might finish anything, a little better, but I don't think they'll play much different than they did against Sweden. That was the result that Poland kind of needed in a sense. If they had, have any hope of getting out of this group, was a draw and it happened thankfully so but then again yeah poland's i don't know yeah i can only hope i like i was saying before i go like i said i went before we went to the slovakia game just surprise me that's all i ask <laughs> i mean they kind of surprised you in yeah, a bad well, way i didn't expect a red card no i feel like the poland lineup just changes every game like from the friendlies like there's not really yeah. too much consistency and that's kind of a problem getting a new coach this time of the year. Like, they got yeah. him in March. But, I is mean... Off, is uh, Krakowiak out for next game? Yes. Oh, rip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I like... I hope, hopefully, Mateusz uh, Klisch can play well. Or Modern rip. Will play, come in. I, I hope to see Modern play. Like, yeah, he's, give he's some of the bad. younger guys some yeah. games. Like, at least they can potentially so like have something to prove. Like, play Puhach. Yeah. Play Yuzviak again. Play a Fierchuk or um, play. Mulder. I like I like that striker they do have. We have uh, sports. How do you how do you say it? Was it Svederski or Fierchuk? Yeah, when he came on, he looked actually quite good. He had a nice shot on net with for a yeah. limited amount of time and down a man. That was that was a good attempt. Yeah, I mean Poland did score, but yeah. Let's just move on. Let's quickly talk about Spain, Sweden. Like we mentioned, it finished in a draw, one one. Yo, they need to get Murat off the fucking pitch, yo. <laughs> I swear, if yeah. they would have started with Odin, they would have won this game. They really did it to themselves. Yeah, it was... that guy is awful. He's just bad. She's not the like with that much possession they had, the amount of ball, the amount of time they were in, in Sweden's final third. They really should have done much better. They left. Dude, they have they had Gerard Moreno shitting on the bench. Morata has done the equivalent the equivalent of fucking nothing this season, and he's just gonna he's just gonna continue it, man. Yeah, like, but... I don't know what they were expecting, really. I mean, I think they were expecting him to get some into good positions and potentially score on the chances, which he did get into some good positions. He just didn't score the chances. Yep. Surprise, surprise. Um, 
And, but Sweden you got to give credit to Sweden defending well. Like the coach said, they're playing in Seville, 32 degree weather against a team that is better quality than them. They're not going to outplay them in the heat like that. They're going to play what their best style of play is and let let Spain have the ball. And it nearly worked, but Sweden probably should have scored a goal. But like Isaac was so unlucky not to score that goal there. Uh, Lorente crossed it off the line and hit the post, but like he was having a hell of a game. There, there's one point where mm-hmm. he beat four guys at once or something like that. It's very fun to watch him play, honestly. Was are you expecting mm. much against Spain? No. Okay. Matt, are you expecting much from Slovakia against Sweden? So the techers, man. That's what I'm expecting. Slovakian techers. <laughs> I'm expecting nothing but fucking techers. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the last group then. The one that just finished on the day we're recording this. We saw Portugal defeat Hungary 3-0 and France defeating Germany 1-0. Let's first talk about Portugal. Uh, it, while it looks like on paper a, a dominant performance, they didn't get the goals till relatively late in the match. No, you're not wrong, yeah. Hungary, uh, at one point they nearly took the well, They did take the lead until referee <laughs> put the offside flag up, which fair enough, it was offside. Unfortunately, but- I've been so lit. For a second there, we thought Hungary was taking the lead in front of a full capacity. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> it was I mean, insane. they really wanted that that, that poor uh, that linesman was just. I don't think anybody in Hungary likes him right now. He's the enemy he, of the nation. He made the right call. <laughs> yeah, he did. I know, but still, you're. Just, I mean, you're like we. I think I mentioned that. You know, officials in sports are tend to be more vil- villainized than anything. They they're looked as the enemy by some by supporters who don't typically watch the sport. I guess. <laughs> so we saw Rafael Guerrero or Gore. Uh, <laughs> he scored in the 84th minute. Um, deflected shot, pretty unfortunate for Hungary. But after that, we saw Cristiano Ronaldo penalty and another Cristiano Ronaldo goal. It's a pretty good goal, to be fair. Yeah. It was. <laughs> Did but slide that goalkeeper. In Portugal, they probably should have taken some chances in the first half, so they made things a lot harder for themselves. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, you got to give some respect for Hungary. They, a lot of people have ridden them off, and they fought to nearly the end, just a little bit of bad luck. But at the end of the day, it shouldn't be surprising that Portugal got a victory. Well, I think we were all expecting to win that game by three goals. They yeah, honestly started. <laughs> it just so, came so late. All uh, goals. But finally, the last game of the match day, France versus Germany. Was and Liam in their one v one predictions. They both predicted two two. I wish we got that match, but unfortunately, eh, a little bit more dull. We saw an own goal from Mats Hummels in the twentieth minute as the only goal. We did see technically some other goals, but they're offside and Bappe with both of them mm. one with a great strike which i don't know how he yeah. found the back of the net in that one dude this and guy, the other one this guy is fucking cracked this guy rewrote my entire fantasy football team just so i could <laughs> stick <laughs> his shit in there because that guy is crazy i don't care if he was offside man yeah. mental like, both goals insane uh Ravio hit the post as well be, in the second half and germany a little disappointing from them. I, I don't think they set up their lineup the best. Like, they didn't really start an out-and-out striker. Um, I mean, they had Thomas Muller there, Serge Gnabry and Havertz in the front three. I guess all of them are capable of playing any part of the front three and interchanging. It just didn't really work out for them. Gnabry probably had their best chance in the second half, but he hit the ball into the ground where it went over the bar. Uh, just... And also, it just looked like France, they weren't trying to really destroy Germany in this match. They went more for 1-0 is good enough. We will play for 1-0, and that's fine by us. If we get another, that's great. But France defended very well. Mm -hmm. No complaints from me from their performance. I'm not really surprised it was a 1-0. Like We saw their 2018 World Cup, a lot of their matches were close, but in most of those matches, they just defend so well and give the opposition very little space to actually get a good chance. Yeah, I agree. And uh, also, fun fact, actually, Germany has lost a... This is the first time they've ever lost an opening match of the European Championship for the first time. 
Uh, it's after seven wins and five draws, they finally lose. Uh, not I mean, the ideal loss though, because there's an own goal from Hummels. But I mean, you gotta give them a gotta give them a break. Like it's yeah. Germany, and I hate saying this. I hate saying this because it's Germany. This is nothing against any of the German fans here, but it's fucking France, bro. Like, yeah. I don't. As much they, as I they, like, they still have chances to get through this group. Germany really just doesn't do. feel like that threat as much as I used to be. I'm not sure, but I, I don't know if that's. I don't know. There's something that feels odd about Germany nowadays. I honestly think the difference between them and Portugal isn't as great as people think it is. And I think they could definitely win the game against Portugal. I just the first game was against France, man, and it's game yeah. one. And this it was a tight team game. We already know is fucking sick. So yeah. I mean, Paul Pogba was making passes that were unbelievable. Dude, Paul Pogba yeah. is nasty for France, bro. He's so good. Yeah. But yeah, um, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I think I, mean, I think Germany cool. still can make it through this group. I think they can still finish second, to be fair. I, so. granted, I think one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, that tackle from Mats Hummels on Mbappe, that, do you think that should have been a penalty? It's um, It wasn't called a penalty, so I won't say it wasn't, because he did make contact with the ball. It's a bit sus, though, because you know he hit the player's foot before he got the ball. Yeah, and, and it was from behind, legs, and it was through his legs. It's a bit suspect. So, like, it didn't cost France in the end, but yeah, it, no. like I was talking with my dad about it. Like, I can see why they didn't call the penalty, but yeah, it is suspect. Like, it's a bit sus. So it's fine. But though. of course, for the next match day, we see Portugal versus Germany, which is yeah, hopefully nice. going to be a great game. Very, and it was also just good nice. to see. Sorry. It was just good to see Ronaldo scoring because they, the guy seemed a little grumpy going before in, in this match. I mean, there was that whole Coca-Cola incident, and then there was a, a, a video of him getting annoyed at the cameraman as he's entering the pitch. Like, man, you okay? <laughs> it's your okay. Yeah, like, well, enjoy wa- bad. Aqua. Yeah. No, no Coca-Cola. Pictures, pictures resurface. Ronaldo with a Coca-Cola can. I mean, I read somewhere he lets... Ronaldo Jr. drink Coca Cola, but he doesn't like like it. <laughs> he doesn't like it when he does. <laughs> he doesn't like it because he's not being paid by them at the moment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they don't give us money, it's Junior. Come is. on, man. Ronaldo's not Italian. Yeah, that was weird. Pizza. But, oh my god, that's not something Ronaldo eats. Gluten free pizza, maybe. <laughs> but of course, we see free protein pizza. Lovely stuff. With no carbs. With yeah. zero carbs. Gross. It's ah. fucking disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just uh, thank you to everyone who took the time to listen, and we appreciate you, especially maybe if you're listening to this on audio apps. Thank you for your time. You've made it this far. You're a legend. Uh, if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, uh, don't forget to leave a review as well. That always, always kind of helps. The next five stars, just, you know, just help us out. But other than that, for everyone else in the ninth minute, because, you know, sure, we did this in the locker room, but we'll be releasing this out there to the public uh from all of us in the ninth minute this has been yet another week in the beautiful game and we'll see you next time